Hello, welcome back to my allotment garden here in Nottingham. It's the end of May now, it's the 29th, and oh my God, what a month it's been. It's been so full on. Um, it's been a bit of a blur, to be honest. Um, I can't quite remember what I've done, what's happened, what the weather's been like, because it's just been so frantic. You know, there was things to pot on and plant out, lots of watering to do. I know it's been warm. I've got a bit of a tan, dodgy tan line. Um, and so dry. I mean, we had rain last Sunday, but apart from that, I can't remember. It's a bit of a similar pattern to last year, which is a bit worrying, um, but nice. You know, it's great that we can get all these jobs done. So I've just been incredibly busy, both here and at work. We've got lots of new borders that we've worked on. Uh, we had lots of tree ferns delivered. That was amazing. So we've got all of this fernery section now planted up. I planted up my dahlia borders in the walled garden. Uh, so it's all happening. Um, but there's lots of new things to see on the allotment. There's lots of flowers coming out now. Um, and I've got a new bench. This was my bargain purchase and it's got a bit of a fancy trick, um, which I'll show you a bit later on. Zoran's plot at the moment is really, really bad. Um, the thistles are up to here, but I've got some new crops in and I'm still making good use of the greenhouse. So we'll make a brief visit over there um, later on. Um, so let's jump right in and show you how my allotment is looking at the end of May. Be warned, it is a bit messy in places and I've got a lot of furniture down there at the bottom, but look how green it is. I just have a look at the rose that I recently planted and it's put on some incredible growth over the last few weeks and I don't know how many flowers I'm likely to have it being its first year but lots of leaves lots of growth so it's looking really happy over in the herb bed just next to my rose I've got a few chai flowers in bloom you can tell a bee's already been here and pollinated it and the roses are coming along in my hedge and this is the Rosa rugosa but I also have a dog rose over here. But as you can see, I've got lots of buds all over this plant and it goes all the way down the side of my plot. So I'm really hoping to have a full hedge of pink flowers this summer for the first time. We've not had this many ever before because this is actually quite a new um, established sort of rose hedge that we put in um, about three years ago. I'll be updating some of the pots that are under my plum tree soon now that the daffodils in this one are starting to go over but I have planted up some little daisies in some of them. These are the daisies and they're super cute and happy. My wildlife pond area was actually starting to annoy me a little bit because I had these huge clumps of grass and bindweed was also growing through this bed here and I just thought enough's enough one day and I've tidied it all up. I've planted out lots of new flowers that I've grown from seed including calendula, nasturtiums and poached egg flower as well which is which are all really enjoyed by the pollinators and when I was digging out the bindweed root I actually found a lot of these tiles so I've just made a cute little staircase feature that goes up to the top of the pond um, and I just think if I ever find a frog or a newt using that one day I'm just going to be over the moon. <laughs> the water level has actually dropped significantly over the last few weeks so I do need to top that up with water from my water butt soon. The weather's just been so dry um, yeah I didn't quite realize just how low it's got but now I'm much happier that it's looking so much tidier and I'm gonna have some flowers in bloom to look forward to. It's amazing how much wildlife you can bring into your garden by just having a tiny little pool of water. And this is an old Belfast sink that I've upcycled and all I had to do was buy a plug to plug the sink and then dig a hole and put it in the ground a little bit. So I really recommend that you install a pond no matter what size in your garden. You could just sit here all day and watch what's going on in there moving on to the garlic and this one is definitely oh I've got the scapes coming and you can eat these I've not used them before but I think you can just chop them up and put them into a stir fry but you must get rid of them because otherwise the bulb isn't actually going to grow much more but if you look at the stem on that it it's pretty thick 
Um, so I'm, I'm super chuffed with these two rows and these were bought bulbs from a garlic company in the UK whereas the others if you remember I'm doing an experiment here well the others are much more feeble in comparison these are the supermarket bought garlic bulbs um, just from the food area not specialized for growing and they're not they're not that great you know over into the strawberry cages well these have been flowering quite early for this time of year and oh my god you know i've been so busy i've not really had a close look around here recently i've actually got strawberries that are just days away from picking that one just needs probably another day to get that side nice and ripe that's amazing. I don't think I've ever had May strawberries before. Oh, that one's ready. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to pick it. Because if I don't, the slugs might have it. Ooh. Yeah, that'll do. Happy days. Oh, that smell. Oh, that's just the smell of summer. And it's mostly ripe, but you know what? I can't wait this long strawberry season is just about here. Cheers. Mm. Oh wow. So good. If you're not doing it already, grow some strawberries. You can't buy this incredible flavour. It's just so sweet. Okay, enough eating. What else is going on? I have some tiny little daffodils. And yeah, I've still got daffodils at the end of May because I planted these really quite late. As well as some more garlic. I'm just growing garlic everywhere. Oh, and some bindweed. Urgh. Okay, a few weeds going on here. And my blackcurrant bush isn't looking too happy. I'm not sure if that's down to its age because I know it was here for a few years before me. And I've been here almost five years now, so I think it's just about had its day. It's got a lot of new growth on it, but it just doesn't seem to have recovered. My pineberry planters, God, that's a mouthful to say, have got lots of flowers on. So these are the white strawberries that taste like pineapple. And again, if you can find them, I recommend you grow them because the taste is really, really sort of exotic and it doesn't taste like anything that we can actually grow here in the UK because it's so fruity and tropical. Yeah, gonna have, oh look, tiny, tiny little berries. Oh, can't wait for them. Rhubarb, still enormous. Gonna make some rhubarb vodka um, over the next few weeks. That's infusing vodka with rhubarb um, and it works really well. It's a nice summer cocktail type of drink. Autumn raspberries have shot up and they're spreading into the apple tree area. Look, we've got some baby apples and the apple drop will happen in the next month or so where all the little ones just fall off and that's to make room for, you want three or four really per spur to get a nice size. Otherwise, if all of these stay, they'll just be really, really small little apples. Underneath, we've got the first of the foxgloves appearing and they're just coming into bloom now and the forget-me-not is starting to go over now which is such a shame because i love that little pretty blue flower but there are lots of things to replace it on the way I have my spindle tree which has just about finished flowering and this has a wonderful color in autumn it's in a pot at the moment but i might actually plant it in the ground if i get my woodland area sorted out this year also been making a lot of wigwams. I've been planting out my sweet peas. Oh, I've also been doing some weeding and I haven't yet planted out my honesty, which is really stressed now, look at that. But yeah, as you can see, I've got my sweet peas here and they're going to grow up this little teepee that I've made. These are the raspberry canes um, that I've saved from when I pulled up the plants at the end of last year oh wow i've only just had a look at this view 
Look at that foxglove. Look at that bend. That's incredible. I've got some grass coming up here and moving down. My alliums are coming up. They're not as tall as last year and I don't know if they'll be as big. So they've kind of been swamped by everything else around it. But, oh, it's quite windy. Oh, wait, that's one of them. And the other two are up here. They're nowhere near. They must be a different variety. I can't remember what they are. Honestly, I can't get over the shape of that fox club. Let's go around the other side and see what's going on in the wildlife corner. Over on the other side, the lupins are out in bloom now. And we've got more forget-me-not that's just passing over. Oh, there's a bee right around my head. He was just enjoying this beauty. Oh, I love lupins. I'm quite lucky that we've had such a dry spring so far. It hasn't attracted any slugs that absolutely devour these plants. And just look at the foliage. I love the leaves. When the water droplets collect in the middle, it just looks so pretty. I'm so happy to see the return of this quaking, or is it quacking, grass. They've got a lovely fishbone sort of shape and the way they move in a breeze, I, I just love it. Combined with a lupin on the other side. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite enjoying that at the moment. Moving on to the wildlife corner itself, it's actually quite dominated by fever few at the moment. And you can't see much of the stepping stones, but I'm going to find my way. This is feverfew. It's a herb. It's apparently very good for preventing migraines if you eat the leaf. But I grow it for the pretty little daisies. They are white and yellow um, and they self-seed everywhere. And it's gone a little bit out of control this year. So I might even pull a few plants out because I've got a few cosmos to go in here somewhere. But I, I just didn't realise how, how easily it spreads. Almost all of this is fever few. So give it a couple of weeks and this, all of those daisies will be out in bloom. I've also got another little teepee here where I'm growing some more sweet peas. The verbena, that's shot up. Oh, and my aquilegia. Yeah, I've got a real thing for aquilegia at the moment and I'm definitely going to try and find some at Chatsworth when I visit because they are really nice naturalizing kind of flower and they're okay for part shade you've got lots of different varieties to choose from and yeah I just think they're really pretty sedums growing really well I can't remember what this is or if it's actually some kind of weed I've got a feeling it might be from a bulb that I've planted I have no idea salvia that's also coming into flower. This is a really gorgeous purple colour. I picked this up from Chatsworth last year. It was a gift from the garden that I was working in. Um, they allowed me to take one of the flowers from the display. So I picked this rather relevant purple salvia that the bees absolutely love. Oh my god, is that a lupin? The size of those leaves. Ah, there's a wasp. Okay, I think it's gone. Um, the size of those leaves. Oh, where's the flower? Where's the flower spike? Not here yet. Oh, I do hope it flowers. That's going to be incredible. Okay, I'm having to be really careful where I tread now. Oh, right at the back, next to the sort of dead wood wall that I constructed for all the uh, birds and the critters. Obviously, I kept some uh, nettles there. Great for the butterflies. And my clematis is blooming away. I only planted this last year and I'm hoping that it's going to cover this corner where I've got quite a lot of sort of dead wood. Well the sun has decided to come out and it's time to move away now from the wildlife corner and take a look at the new and improved seating area. Ta-da! So this is my new bench and it cost me absolutely nothing. Um, if you've been following me for a while you'll know that I am a bit of a a bargain shopper when it comes to my allotment and I enjoy looking through places like Gumtree and Facebook Marketplace for some really good second-hand deals. Um, and so I met a lovely lady and took the bench away 
but she also said oh I've got this um, toadstool table if you want to take that as well so I was like well yeah <laughs> so I've got the two things for absolutely nothing uh, from somebody who lives not that far from me um, and I'm really chuffed I mean it does have a little bit of work to do on the table as you can see it's got some um, markings and some bird poop so I do need to sand it down and give it a new lick of paint but I couldn't be happier because I've got a lovely little bench where I can sit if I'm by myself or with my boyfriend and I can put my feet up, have a cup of tea, uh, enjoy the view of my allotment and the dahlias when they come out in bloom. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy because it saves me so much space, whereas before I had a really big glass table uh, with four stairs, stairs, four chairs that you could stack but you couldn't fold, so it took up loads of room. and. I didn't really use it myself. I used it if I had friends around and we had a barbecue. So it just took up too much room. So I'm gonna sell that. It's over by the compost bin at the minute. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy, um, but it's got a special trick. Uh, it transforms. So let me show you what it does. Oh, by the way, I'm now wearing two microphones because I've been having trouble with my other one. So this is my dual mic. Um, which I should be sharing with somebody else, but uh, I'm just l using it as a last resort because Yeah, my one was rubbish. So if you if you know of any good microphones for iPhones that I can just plug in um, Please let me know because um, I need a replacement now. Are you ready for this? Ta-da! So yes, I have a bench that transforms into a picnic table that now seats four people and I can have barbecues here in the summer, move it more to the middle and still have the little toadstool table at the side where I can have the food or drinks. And yeah, I'm just so, so happy with my purchase. I never even knew these things existed. It's such an amazing space saving idea. And all you gotta do is lift it to go back again. I mean, how amazing is that? I've also got some sweet peas here growing in a container um, so I can sit here in the summer and just enjoy the smell of those. It's going to be bliss. Behind the box plant we've got my very big containers and I've actually treated myself to some eucalyptus. Now I just love the smell of this, it takes me back to my childhood because we had one in our garden and I know it's going to want to grow into a tree but I have bought this especially for cutting for when my dahlias are in bloom and I'm taking lots of cut flowers home. I'm gonna cut some of this to go with it to make some arrangements at home. And also in the container, I've got a hookera and some petunias. I'm not usually a fan of petunias, um, but these are absolutely incredible. They're called Lightning Sky. And just look at that. I mean, there's no filter. There's no Photoshop going on here. Um, that's just how they are and they're absolutely amazing like little galaxies and the more you deadhead them the more flowers you get over on this side I've actually made some more wigwams teepees whatever you like to call them and uh, those are for some French beans that I'm growing I've got some lettuce underneath them and that's the fat lazy blonde recently planted those out so they're looking a little bit floppy at the moment they've actually started to sprout and this is my cossy cos violet so that's encouraging to see that they've germinated just fine oh i've got some more as well lingua de fuco fuco <laughs> i think it's foco i don't know i'm going to give up trying to pronounce that one i think that's for the best I'm growing a lot more beans on Soren's allotment where I've got such a fantastic structure for it. Um, I'll take you there in a bit. And there's also some chard and some perpetual spinach there behind. I also recently planted out my courgette plant and this is a golden courgette. I like to grow the yellow ones because I find them so much easier to spot underneath this green foliage and it means I'm much less likely to accidentally grow a marrow sized courgette which is a bit more tricky to eat. I bought a couple of new herbs when I was at college the other week. We've got a little garden centre there where you can buy plants. And this is a French sorrel, which is a herb and it's a perpetual salad leaf. And it's really quite tasty. Um, it's quite zesty. 
quite zingy, got a nice lemony kind of flavour. So it's going to be great in stir fries or salads, anywhere that you'd perhaps use spinach or just any kind of salad leaf, really. I also bought some chocolate mint. This smells lovely and it apparently tastes really good if you fry it gently in a pan with strawberries, which I haven't tried yet, but you know, they're not far off, so I might give that a try. I bought another mint plant. This one is pineapple mint, and I'm basically replacing the plant that I killed because um, I kept it in a pot over the summer last year when it was really, really hot, and it didn't do too well. And I don't think mint really likes to be in a pot unless you remove the base so that the roots can grow down. Um, that means it doesn't send off the runners, which run sideways, but it still happily grows. So I need to find somewhere to plant my mint where it's not going to um, spread too easily. Um, or maybe I'll find a pot that doesn't have a base. These flower borders that didn't have many tulips in, remember? Um, these will all have dahlias in over the next few weeks. So that's something new to look forward to. Just ignore the big pile of stuff there that I haven't put away yet. Over here we've got my squash patch. I've got five different squash, well not five different squash, I've got five squash growing. I've got a chicky curry, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I've also got some honey boat and some, what's the pink one? Oh, sugar candy roaster, that's the one. Um, again, I've got a bottle in here, it's got holes in it, so that if I put the hose straight down, the water goes directly down to the roots. I don't want it on the surface where it's going to run off and evaporate. Um, I have also mulched my plants with some well-rotted manure because squash plants are incredibly hungry and thirsty plants. So the more you can feed them, the more you can water them, the more they'll grow and you might get bigger squash. On close inspection, I do have some flower buds appearing and some tiny little tendrils. Oh, they're so cute. And here's one of the others. You can see they do have a bit of a discoloration to the edge. And that's because they got really hot in the greenhouse one day and I didn't open the door. So they got a little bit scorched by the sun, but they'll recover fine. You know, it's gonna be sending out so many new leaves soon and trailing all over this patch. You're not gonna be able to see a footprint of soil within the next two months. In front of the carrot bed is my shadow. Hello. <laughs> Um, let me turn around so you can see better. My shallots, they've all divided now. And look, they're splaying out, which is a good sign. And they're all doing the same, so I'm really chuffed with those. I've also planted out some onion de Paris, which is a tiny little pickling onion. And I've also got some other shallots, banana shallots. I'm just intrigued as to how those little spindly things are going to catch up with the other shallots over there. I've also got some leeks down this side as well. Wow, in this sunlight, just look at how orange my carrot bed is. I'm growing two varieties, by the way. I'm trying red samurai and a flyaway, which is supposedly a carrot fly resistant variety, but I will be covering it with a mesh netting very soon. And behind the shallots, we have my potato bed and I'm growing them in the ground and also in containers as well. And I've recently started to earth them up. The ones in the containers are actually full to the brim now with compost, um, but I'm doing it the no dig way. So rather than digging soil and mounding it around the plant, I'm actually just using compost that I've bought that you know comes in a bag. On the side of the container potatoes, I've got some beetroot growing. I've got two different varieties here um, alternated. I've got some bolt hardy, and the golden one is actually called Boldor. The rockery raised bed is just filled with plants that I need to get in the ground ASAP. Um, some of them are looking really quite wilted. I bought <laughs> these lettuce. Uh, some potted lettuce is looking very sad with an interesting bug on. What are you? Hello. I'm not sure what that is, but it looks really cool. Fantastic green colour. I'm just going to leave you be. So over here I've got some sweet corn, some sunflowers, some nasturtiums, foxgloves, I need to get that in the ground, 
and I also bought these plug plants of these little daisy like plants so I'll be potting all of these soon to make way for the dahlias which will be going in here within the next week let's head into the poly tunnel where it's looking pretty organized I still have a few things here that I didn't want to leave outside but I've got some of the tomatoes in already let me just close this door it's so windy out my tomatoes poor things they were getting so stressed because there was well some of them are still in their little pots and they've started to turn yellow which means they've got a deficiency in nitrogen um, when it's the older leaves like the lower leaves um, so basically it was in its pot for too long needed to go in the ground but you know it's still pretty healthy it'll put back up and this one's even got flowers already and a side shoot or a sucker and these are the ones you meant to remove so you'll find it in a right angle like this and what that will do is grow way faster than anything else and zap all the energy so we just carefully pull it off unless you're growing a bush variety I'm not growing too many of those I like the cordons especially here in the polytunnel this one is sun gold which is an f1 variety lovely little orange tomato a lot of people grow it because it's so sweet and absolutely delicious we've got seven plants at the moment in the ground and I've got some basil interplanted because they're a great companion for tomatoes help ward off any nasty bugs and apparently it also helps improve the flavor and when you think about it these plants would probably naturally grow next to each other anyway in the wild in places like Italy and the Mediterranean so it only makes sense to try and recreate those conditions again I'm using my bottle technique and I might go into more depth about that in a separate video I'm not sure um, but basically I water them straight here both the bottles got holes in so it waters directly down to the roots and that helps prevent blight um, because I won't have any water on top of the surface of the soil oh this plant's looking really sad I might give it a feed that'll help perk it up I like to use an organic seaweed feed although this one does have a tiny little stake here at the moment um, I'm actually going to be using string to support my tomatoes so I've not quite finished setting them up yet I've still got more plants to go in you can see like this one I've still got it in a tiny pot I need to get some more bottles to um, do my little system and I also need to get some more string as well um, this one needs watering look it's so limp <laughs> again this one's got flowers on which is absolutely amazing for this time of year i feel like i must be kind of early this year i definitely sowed these too early which is why they got a bit stressed because i couldn't plant them out so that's a job for the weekend to get all of this finished here in my random assortment of plants in the polytunnel i've got some more cosmos this is a dahlia that should be at zoran's plot but it isn't because i haven't taken it over yet natal uh, we will be popping to Zorin's very shortly um, and I've also got an okra plant and this was given to me by somebody on the allotment site and I've never grown okra before so I'm quite interested to find out really um, if you've got any tips for okra let me know I'm also growing some inca berries which I've not grown before um, apparently they taste a bit like tomato um, but I don't actually eat raw tomatoes so that's going to be interesting <laughs> uh, something's been nibbling it I need to have a little look around the pots for slugs or snails um, they usually look on the bottom and it's not there I've also got a random succulent leaf <gasps> and it's rooted oh, oh my god I've just pulled it off okay no I haven't but that's amazing I haven't done a succulent rooted cutting before here is how my plot is looking at the end of May lots of plants that have gone out lots more to go lots of flowers to go in I'm feeling pretty good with how it's looking at the moment um, and also if you see here my bird box the blue tits that were nesting there they fledged last week and I caught a tiny glimpse of the little fledglings the young chicks um, but I've been watching the parents zip back and forth for the last few weeks and it's been an absolute joy to watch on my new bench table bench picnic table bench fab thing um, so yeah they've gone now which is a shame but it's been really nice to 
Um, just watch the little family brood. Before I start to wrap up for this episode, let's go nip over to Zoran's allotment. That's my neighbour who I share a space with, although he hasn't been here that much, so um, just mind your legs as you go in because the thistles are really high. Oh God, are you ready? It's so wild. Look at all those thistles. It's a joke. Oh my God. Yeah, it's a pretty big battle um, and I'm a bit defeated, but I'm still just gonna plant loads of squash there regardless because I have them all here waiting. Um, so that's tomorrow's job. Got a few more courgettes as well, but I've strung up the bean support um, that Zorin has here on his plot. I'm not sure if he built it or if the person before him did. Um, some of the strings have actually come a bit loose in the winds. I'm hoping they've not snapped. Um, but down at the bottom here, I have some peas growing. I have two varieties here. One's called Robinson and the other is Avi Joan. And these were both given to me as seeds from a seed saver called Adam Alexander. Um, so he's protecting some heritage varieties. So these will grow up to two meters in height, which is why I've put them over here. So they actually have the support that they're gonna need. And all of the bean seeds that I planted are germinating right now. Um, these are actually more established than some of the others that are just coming up out of the ground. And I've got three varieties in here. One is the Bellotti bean, another one i can't remember the name but it's like a um, butter bean and the other one is the violet one that i've also got on my plot and so far touch wood they don't seem to have any damage by the pea and bean weevil which takes out little notches from the side of the leaves so fingers crossed he'll stay away from them oh my god the nettles just look at them so angry Okay, I'm going to try and mish it down to the greenhouse door there that's open without getting stung too much. Raspberries on the way. Fig trees putting out some new fruits. Lots of sticky weed. And somewhere, I did see it the other day, there was a gooseberry bush, but I've lost it. Child there, that's just going to seed. And some strawberries down in these. I made it, that wasn't too hard, and I don't think I've got any scratches. So this is Zoran's greenhouse and shed at the moment, and I've got lots more of my plants in here and seedlings that I haven't planted out yet, but most of them are actually my chili peppers and sweet peppers that are still waiting to be potted up, which is a job for the weekend. And I've got lots of basil over here, your standard sweet basil, and Aristotle, which is a fantastic little bushy variety. I've not actually grown it before, but it's got much smaller leaves, really compact and almost like a topiary ball, like a box. Um, so it's really decorative as well as edible. And then I've got yet more squash. This is gonna be an epic year for squash, hopefully, um, so long as they grow okay in Zoran soil, um, despite the, obviously the nettles. This one's Candy Roaster. Thank you so much, Jason, for the seeds. Um, you should follow Jason on Instagram and he grows his own food on his allotments. Also part of a band. He seems pretty cool. Never met, but he's always sopping seeds with me, which is just lovely. Also got some Baby Boo. Thank you very much, Kirsty, on my little allotment on Instagram. She's given me some of these seeds. I just love doing seed swaps. It's just a great part of the Instagram and gardening community. This little guy was just on my arm and it scared me to death. It's not as big as it looks. Oh my God, look at it. I think it's a cricket. Let's see if it'll move. Ooh. In this bed, I've actually planted out my chickpeas. They were starting to go really yellow because again, I left them in the pots for too long, um, but they're looking a little bit better now. Daily essential. Um, they're all here, all ready to go out, and I've been pinching them out. I've actually cut the top of my dahlia off, and that's to encourage a more bushy plant. Can you see here where I've got some more leaves that are just about to come out? And um, you cut it real close to this point so that all the hormones shoot and push this into growth. And what this will do is create a much bushier plant that is gonna be stronger. You're less likely to have really thick stems that blow over in the wind 
which actually happened to me last year. So I've been um, pinching out all of my dahlias to create stronger plants. I have potted up some of my chilies. Um, this one's just starting to get its green colour back again after I gave it a liquid feed of um, seaweed. And this is the Bohemian goat one. Zoran actually has a grapevine growing in his greenhouse and we've got lots of bunches of fruits forming already. Something else that I'm growing for the first time this year, the melon. Um, that's doing really well. Probably needs a bigger pot soon. So that's how Zoran's shed and greenhouse area is looking right now. We're not going to be doing any more outside because, well, it's just mostly thistles. Thank you for joining me on another tour of my allotment. It's been one hell of a busy month, but it's not going to slow down anytime soon because in the next week or so, I'm going to be doing lots of visits to garden shows, including RHS Chats with Flower Show and BBC Garden as well live. Um, First of which, RHS Chatsworth, I'll be there to help set up the event and I'll also be stationed as a volunteer on their feature garden, which this year is all about trees and the importance of them and why we should be growing them in our gardens. I'm also going to go to BBC Gardeners World Live, where I'll be helping to set up the show garden that my college, Derby College, have been working towards over this last year and that's called the Revelation Garden and I've been sowing lots of seeds and doing plant divisions for the plants that I'm actually going to plant into this huge show garden. Um, it's actually the biggest one there so I really am looking forward to working with my students to see all of our hard work come to fruition. Hopefully I can get some footage from those events to share with you guys. On the allotment I've got the dahlias to plant out, the chilies to pot up, and the tomatoes to also plant into the polytunnel but hopefully we're going to have lots and lots of strawberries to enjoy soon which are one of my favorite summer crops because uh, the taste is just like nothing else so i hope the weather and the growing season has been kind to you so far i love to hear how you're getting on in the comments thanks for joining me and i'll see you on the next episode mm -hmm.